is a big issue. And it's not just this report. I don't just trust one scientific report and then say, oh, it must be true, it must be real. I have read the writings of top mathematicians, people like Einstein. Uh, you've seen the reports. I'm going to do one coming up next week showing all the bio engineers, genetic engineers, mathematicians who were atheists or agnostics. But you, now with the incredible super... Uh, electron microscopes and the cyclotrons and the and the super crunching computers they are seeing the coding in everything and how fantastic it is uh, and are just saying this was made this was designed okay and that's a good starting point for people I've, I've noticed atheists and I'm not attacking atheists out there but most of them are like I've had atheists before I've run into the folks at the local atheist TV show and I've been on the TV station uh, and, and they're like, oh, well, you believe there's some New World Order and black helicopters. And at the TV station, there was actually hanging on the bulletin board when that happened, an article about a military drill. And I said, it's funny you said that. Uh, they were probably saying it because they were jealous because that was in the newspaper. I go, look, they admit drills right here. That I was right. And they went, oh, yeah, sure. This is a religion to you. So, see, people that question, we're a conspiracy theorist. We question known liars, certified liars. That's weird. Uh, we say, look at the fantasticness of the universe. I resonate. I I have insight. I I know when somebody's looking at me, you know, from behind. I I I have you know precognitive powers. We all do to, to some extent or another. I mean, I know there's something going on here, uh, and the science just keeps proving it with the cells in plants and in animals and butterflies and fish, where they are picking up electromagnetic feedback and light from the sun and. Uh, they, they've excised these sensors. They're also in the human brain and also in the stomach and, and uh, exposed them to radiation from space and they're resonating with it. I mean, we are just filled with receivers. I mean, we are incredible creatures and it's all science. It's not quacky kookiness. And they don't want you knowing that. They don't want you getting sunshine. They want you inside in the TV with its fake light programming your eyes. That. They know the sunlight goes right into your eyes and activates the pineal gland and other areas of your brain. They know all this. Now, I'm going to go to Paul Watson for the balance of the hour. He got shot a great video report with a bunch of news articles linked under it. Is the universe a computer simulation up at prisonplanet.com right now? Cosmic rays offer clue our universe could be a computer simulation. And that's uh, Wired magazine. Uh, MIT, the idea we live in a... Simulation isn't science fiction. MIT Technology Review, the measurement that would reveal the universe is a computer simulation. And then it goes down to, as they look at it, it's freaking them out because it appears to be a simulation, not random as they've claimed. Now, again, the, the, every field keeps finding this. Paul Watson joining us from our London bureau uh, over at prisonplanet.com has followed a video report on this. Paul Watson, break it down. Hi Alex, good to be here. Yeah, it's funny you were just mentioning, you know, skeptics saying, cutting us up even for talking about this. There was a comment, InfoWars is jumping the shark by covering this. And not only is it being discussed, and it has been discussed for years by, you know, cutting edge science, you just mentioned MIT, Wired Magazine, New Scientist. I mean, Plato was talking about it, what, nearly... 2,500 years ago with the allegory of the cave, which you've played on the show before. You know, René Descartes was talking about it 400 years ago with his evil demon philosophy, this whole idea that an illusion is created to distract us, to divert us from reality. So it's far from jumping the shark. It's basically what everybody's talking about on the cutting edge of science now. Uh, and the video I made about it was just, a collation of articles about a University of Bonn experiment in Germany undertaken by scientists who basically discovered through a calculation in which they use one tiny part of the universe that when cosmic rays fly through this part of the universe and dissipate, they don't do so randomly. They do so with an energy that's, quote, consistent with the kind of boundary that you'd find if there was an underlying lattice governing the limits of a simulator. So basically they're saying that the movement and behavior of cosmic rays suggests that they're performing exactly as you would expect them to perform if they were trapped inside a giant computer simulation, which we call the universe. 
Uh, and it's based, they based it, the foundation of it, on Moore's Law, which, of course, dictates that approximately every two years, computer power doubles. So eventually, humanity is going to get to the stage where computers are so powerful that they can artificially create a reality which is virtually indistinguishable from what we call reality now. Um, which begs the question, of course, how do we know that we're not already living inside a computer simulation? Um, and the reaction to this video so far from several people is, well, if we are living inside a computer simulation, if we are living inside a matrix, then what's the point? Life is pointless. We're just a plaything, a science project for either some future race or whatever. But, you know, I look at it the opposite way. If that is proven, which science is increasingly showing that it is the case, that we're probably living inside an artificial created universe, then that is proof of a creator, isn't it? Well, so the universe was void, and then God spoke it, thought it, and it... And it and it was made, and, and, and that's what they find in every discipline now, is that it's designed, and, and, and the human word computer isn't even proper in all of this. There is a governing structure. They can see the modulation, and off of the projection of the time-space continuum, off of just one of the reading, these cosmic rays, they continue to see particles that should be flowing at, di at different rates and modulations with an overall modulation, and they can tune it and begin to see the structure of the containment system. And it's contained within the thought process of the creator, of God, of the great architect, as the Illuminati calls it, but that's actually a biblical term, which they've stolen. And so it is, it is the construction, and what does the creator tell us? You are made in my image. You are creators as well, but small creators. And so it is the it, literally the consciousness and the will of God creating all of this, but then giving us free will, which is then flowing forth a whole new level of creation. Well, precisely, and I mean, the way they explained it was, think of a chess board, you can only move a chess piece, a minimum of one move, one square on the board. These cosmic rays, when they modulate them against this lattice structure, only move uniformly along this lattice structure. They're not random. So that's why they're saying that it shows uh, that it's probably a computer-generated simulation. And I mean, you know, if we, th if we think about it every night, we create our own mini simulation in our dreams we can move around an environment we can interact with people and objects which is and a fourth and fifth dimension projection which uh, many equations show is actually affecting the universe at some type of uh, galactic level yeah so if one human brain can do that then imagine what a supercomputer or a creator call it what you will with trillions of times the power of one human brain, imagine what they could create with that kind of power. Well, we the way my dad described it is like a dragonfly's eye, and that humans are literally like the compound eyes of a dragonfly through which God is looking. Imagine that. And then it's the manifestation. Well, yeah, because every, every sense that goes through the human brain is processed, isn't it? It's an electrical impulse which goes back to the whole brain in a vat theory. You know, since our brain is merely this decoder of electrical signals, how do we know we're not a brain in a vat? How do we know anything really? When but we are a brain in a vat inside this electrochemical uh, body suit, earth suit, combat suit. I mean, that's it. This is for the, our consciousness, our spirit, to have this experience on this plane. Again, ladies and gentlemen, the system wants to keep your mind down here on earth. We are in the world, but not of it. They want to keep you artificially focused on ugly things, twisted things. We have to cover their crimes, but not because we want to keep you focused on ugliness so that you know they're the authors of ugliness and pain and suffering. The creator of the universe is the author of exaltation and enlightenment and life and gifts and bounty and honor and everything good and just wants to give it all to us, everything. Just flowing, endless, endless gifts. And the enemy, the virus in the system, wants to pull us down, wants torture. Imagine our government's torture is good. Secret arrest, yeah, we torture people's kids. The public's like, that's terrible. Okay, we, we'll stop doing that. They should all go to jail. They're all a bunch of perverts. They're all a bunch of sickos. And again, 
it's not the judgment, no one's perfect, it's that they willfully love the darkness. It's beautiful to them, okay? And, and beauty is ugly to them. And it's, it's not just this, it's not this, you know, there's these big computer models, it's not just them, it's MIT, others have found this, and a lot of the people are becoming religious. And they're realizing it's a guild meant to control them, just like modern churches and mainline religion is meant to control you and suppress you. So is the whole atheist and agnostic movement. They're, they teach it's scientific and it's avant-garde to say there is no God. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. The evidence of God is written in the heavens. It's written in the plants. It's written in your children. It's written in your eyes. And the system knows this and wants to be God itself. You understand that? It is a false creation, an abomination, but it can't create. It has to take God's creations and twist it. But everything it does turns into a curse. I don't mean to be preaching. I apologize. I don't really apologize, but I got all this news to cover. Um, we got all that coming up in the next hour. But Paul Watson, finish up in the last three minutes, my friend. Yeah, another interesting thing is that they found these... Um, error correcting codes which are similar to the ones in computers they've basically found them to be inherent in the very nature of reality in the universe itself so again that directly suggests intelligent design um, and it all phases in with this new study out of the University of Bonn um, so basically they found that the cosmic rays the way they behave the way they move the way the energy dissipates is um, fits in with the notion that it is a computer-generated simulation that there's lattice structures under, underpinning it which inherently show intelligent design. So it's not to say that we're all pointless, our lives are pointless, we're just an imagination of somebody else's science project. The universe is littered with evidence that it has intelligent design, and it's just so exciting to get into this kind of uh, topic, which is why I think you're going to start digging into it even more and there are several major scientists now coming out uh, with this evidence one of them is Nick Bostrom at Oxford University um, so it's just it's an exciting cutting edge field of science and that's why I find it interesting all right Paul so bottom line this needs to be investigated more and I think we should do special reports showing all the other scientists that are now discovering this many of them again who were atheists and they're not saying hey I believe in you know the Baptist Church or the Catholic Church or the Muslims now they're saying this is designed and this is fractal design and I mean it's all right there and people need to understand folks that you know what you're seeing and what's on this planet this isn't everything people 300 years ago would have thought what we have today would have been magic and would have thought we were gods. Now again, I'm saying there is a God. I'm not saying we're going to become gods. I'm not saying it's a perspective of gods. I'm saying, that, yeah, no, the creator made the entire universe. That's God. And we're able to decode just parts of it because we are given a spark of that. Anything else, Paul? No, that's it, Alex. All right, great job, my friend. Your report's up at prisonplanet.com. Is the universe a computer simulation? And the top scientists and huge computer programs are saying yes. They can literally see the fingerprints. They can see the plumbing. They can see the magnetic field contained. I had a very profound discussion just now with Paul Joseph Watson. And if you don't get excited about the nature of consciousness and the nature of the fact that you are an eternal being with a spirit deciding what dimension you're going to reside in, <laughs> that with all that is negative and destructive or with the with with the creator if that doesn't excite you and just get your soul resonating then i really feel sorry for you it's all i can say because with awareness of this knowledge the universe opens up with the keys it's really solomon's keys all right, my friends, where do we begin here? I've already gone over the out-of-control police state information. I'm going to get more into that. The, the news of torture bases everywhere continuing, of course, the warrantless wiretapping. They'll kill you with drones out of America if they want. No judge, no jury, no proof you're even a terrorist. We'll just kill you if we want. Just, ah, government. I mean, just over the top. Just over the top, absolute, convicted themselves, total criminals. And the media's like, well, I guess it's good to kill whoever you want. Yeah, torch is kind of good. You know, it's liberal. It's got a peace prize. Do you got a peace prize? Hey, it looks like Michelle Obama's gaining weight. Racist. 
you know, I think torturing uh, you know, kids all over the world in front of their parents is pretty bad. Oh, that's racist. And I don't want to turn my gun in. Uh, it's racist. Uh, so that's all coming up. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. The propaganda that they've got aimed at the public is designed for people with IQs of about 80 points. But even their higher grade propaganda they put out to the intelligentsia is for, is for people with about an 85 IQ. I mean, it's like all in slow motion. And, and it, and it, but you realize people that are captured by it aren't even really stupid. It is ignorance. It's more than ignorance. It, it's a trance. It's like somebody brought up in a barn from birth who never was even told there was an outside world, never heard sounds, never was brought outside. It's the allegory of the cave. Like, you know, growing up in a 2,000 square foot metal box under the ground and food's just delivered down to you and a television set talks to you. Well, that'd be a good allegory of the cave film to shoot. I bet who did that might be the winner of the 100,000 bucks. Saturdays have millions of these ideas. We should redo the, the uh, Plato's allegory of the cave and just show someone growing up with, with a television and maybe a robot in a system like this is the universe. This is the world. You know, this is everything. Uh, you are a parakeet. <laughs> but they're not really. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And then the world is just a series of more of those boxes. And I know you're listening going, you're right, you're right. You know this. I'm not telling you something that's, well, it shouldn't be profound. But it is profound. Yeah, we should play the allegory of the cave coming up later. We'll do that at the bottom of the hour. The uh, Orson Welles rendition of it from the 70s. Uh, remind me to do that. <clears throat> I'm not coughing because I have a chest issue now. I, I bullhorned for an hour and a half um, and screamed a bunch more uh, at Piers Morgan. Uh, they're in Katy, as you know, so I have uh, flame broiled my larynx as usual for the signature voice. You know, I haven't bullhorned or screamed in a few months. It actually has that deep voice with that weird Texas high twang over its weird voice. I talk to big voice actors and voiceover folks. They have a very unique voice. I'm bragging about a unique voice. It's, it's a weird hammered out voice. It's like a, whatever it is. Oh no, it sounds like a Easter Bunny on PCP.